Hello, my name is Lorian Mariachi, and I will be narrating this slideshow, the iHeartTeachers.org interview lookbook for female teachers. We're going to go over clothing, hair, makeup, and accessory advice, and even more to help you to land your first teaching job. For the look, to start with, you need to build on purely conservative and traditional. Don't worry, we'll build in personality pieces later. You need to keep your color palette simple, black, navy, gray. Wear closed toed shoes. Keep your skirt to at least your knee. Um, you can fudge that a little above or a little below, but it needs to be right around the knee. Or you could wear slacks that go all the way down um, toward the heel without dragging on the ground. If you wear hose, keep them nude. Keep accessories at a minimum. You should only wear one type of accessory and it should be gold or silver. Keep your patterns minimal if you use any at all, things like thin stripes. With your makeup, go for a natural look. Perfume, keep it as subtle very, very subtle. We'll talk more about that later um, if you insist on it. Um, and remember, you can't go wrong with a white blouse and neutral slacks or a white blouse and a neutral pencil skirt. Now, this young lady, Drysdale Pachelot, has an awesome video on YouTube. There's a link there. And she talks about hairdos and dressing for interviews. We especially loved her hairdos and you can go see these online. She has a, a few more, but we like these the best because they're simple. They, um, if you, when your interviewer looks at you, she will know that you can do that on a school day that that doesn't take three hours to put together. It, they keep your face open so the interviewers can see you and like you. And they also streamline your profile, your profile file so that you look professional and approachable. Karima McKimmy is another YouTuber and she does an amazing job in her makeup tutorial. This is a picture of her after she's done her makeup. We'll let her give you the specifics, but here's her key advice. Karima says, stick to neutrals, choose mattes over metallics, and don't forget the nails. You can watch her apply all of the makeup and see what particular product she uses through that link. For nails and accessories, keep your nails clean, well cared for, healthy, and neutral. Your purse or briefcase needs to be conservative, neutral, and structured. Your jewelry, pick one piece. Make sure that it is small and it needs to be either silver or gold. Your shoes need to have a closed toe with a small heel, no more than three inches, and be neutral in color. Now, you might be thinking, if I do all this, nobody will remember me. How will they know me as an individual if I look just like everybody else? And you have a point. You can and should make one, only one, well thought out exception. And here are the tips for making that exception, for adding personality to that neutral background. You could choose a pop of color in one accessory. Your closed-toed shoes, have them be the color for the school that you're going to. Um, your purse could be the color for the school that you're going to if you have it, but only one. Or instead of that, you could have your one piece of jewelry and have it feature an interest instead of just being small and neutral. Here we have an origami owl locket. So maybe you have a volleyball in there so you could talk about how you won the state volleyball championships every year you were in high school or how you went through college on a lacrosse scholarship. A scarf or other sentimental accessory could be tied to your purse or briefcase, but you wouldn't do any of the others if you did this. You're only picking one of these four pieces of advice. Um, so you could have, if you're lucky enough to have inherited a a Hermes scarf, there you go, there's a conversation piece for you, tie that on. Or if you went to that high school or uh, when you lettered in band, tie the letter onto your purse and talk about the great experiences you had at that school, earning your letter and being a part of them. Uh, a school spirit piece, you could have 
everything all neutral and then have a pin that you bought from the school or, or in support of school spirit on your lapel, showing them that you're already a part of their community even before they hire you. The key is only pick one, so make it count and make sure that it gives you a talking point um, and shows a connection to your interests, your personality, your history, your culture, your community, or your the school where you're applying. Now, we took care of the look, and you do want to look good, but please don't forget that your interviewers get all of the senses when they're sitting there in person with you. It just makes good sense to smell good. Your smell might go into the room before you. If it's too strong, it'll still be in the room after you leave. And the other thing is the olfactory nerves are the strongest memory triggers. Think about a time when you smell cookies like your grandmother used to make. All of a sudden you remember being in her kitchen. It might have been 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, but you remember it and you remember the tiles behind the stove and the color bowl she used and the way she let you lick the beater. So olfactory senses trigger strong memories. So make sure that it triggers strong, pleasant memories. Tips. Do practice good hygiene. If you're in the gym when you get the call to come, have them wait a little bit. Tell them it's going to take you a half an hour or an hour to get there and take the time to shower before you go. Uh, brush your teeth between the last time you ate and your interview. Use a breath mint. Place a dryer sheet or lightly, pleasantly scented sachet with your interview outfit while you're storing it so it always smells good just by itself. Or you could use a light, clean, pleasant scent like a in all day toilet or something like that. Do not smoke in, near, or around your interview outfit. Don't smoke in the car when you're bringing it home from the dry cleaners. Don't smoke in your bedroom when it's hanging up in your closet. Don't smoke in your car on the way to the interview. You do not want to smell like cigarette smoke or any other kind of smoke. Use, um, do not use a strong or distinct scent and do not use any scent right around interview time. Uh, even if it's light and fresh and pleasant, if you spray it right before you walk in, it can trigger asthma attacks and it also smells stronger than it does after it settles in on you for a while. So spray in the morning before you go, not right before you walk in. The right touch. Marlene Barizo, in a video that we link to in other articles, breaks down what a good handshake is. The, you and the interviewer's hands should meet at the spaces between your thumbs and your pointer fingers. The pressure should be confidently firm, but not bone crushing. And you should maintain a comfortable eye contact with the interview while you're shaking. Sound off. You don't want the jingle of change in your bag or the tapping of your foot to prevent your interviewer from getting to know you and like you. Likewise, a cell phone going off is bad enough, but we're all human and it happens to the best of us. So that can be overcome. But if the ringtone is inappropriate, that might be a deal breaker. So change all of your ringtones so that if a principal heard it, you would not be embarrassed or fired. <laughs> and, uh, and then try to remember when you walk in to at least turn your phone to silent, if not off altogether all in good taste. Now, this is kind of joking because at no point should you or your interviewer engage in taste testing, but we didn't want to miss our final opportunity for tasteless buns. When in doubt, go conservative. Make tasteful selections that lend you credibility and professionalism rather than flash. Be warm and polite. Have confidence that you will end up in the right job at the right school at the right time. No one wants a bitter candidate. Thank you. We hope these tips help you to land your dream first teaching job. And if they do, please tell us about your experiences in the comments below. Thanks and have a great day.